If we do not get to your question on today's mailbag, my DMs are open. If you have Cowboys questions, NFL stuff, anything, hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDown. Yeah, I'm always down to talk about some Cowboys conversation. So hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDown. From Ed and Nettie, what a, what a throwback name there to, to that show. Is Bradley and I going to play this year? I hope so. But an eyes is not in a great position, if we're being honest. Like Demarcus Lawrence, Randy Gregory, they're making the team, right? Guaranteed, locked and loaded. Terrell Basham, Chauncey Golson, they're making the team. If we count Brett Urban as a defensive tackle, we're still at four. And maybe they carry five again. And once again, it's a Dorrance Armstrong versus Bradley and I battle. I would like it to be Bradley and I, but there are members of the Cowboys organization that are still high on Dorrance Armstrong. So I don't know if Anai's even going to make the team. So let's speak our voices here. I know many of you are on board here. Hashtag free Anai. Spam it in the comment section for me. I want Bradley and I as like my number five edge at minimum this year. If, if they cut him, I'll be a bit disappointed. So go ahead and type in hashtag free and I. From ESPN2, a failing company, uh, wasn't Pollard getting reps at receiver? Yes, he was. That got overblown. Pollard got reps at receiver for a couple reasons here. Number one, because they were thin with injuries and illness at receiver. And also, it's 2021. Your third down back is going to get reps there. I think Pollard was like, I was either 11 or 19%. I can't remember which one there was getting the, the reps in terms of the outside receiver snaps in game. So yes, but not a huge surprise there. From fake fan 45, if you could get one, would you rather Stefan Gilmore or Xavier Howard? Good question. Um, A, don't get your hopes up for either. The Cowboys have invested in other corners. Makes it a bit unlikely. Of the two, though, I'd go Xavier Howard. And youth is the deciding factor there. I think if both guys got traded, Xavier Howard would go for more on the open market. So with that in mind, get your votes in here. Pick a cornerback for me. Who would you rather have right now for this Cowboys team? Type S for Stephon Gilmore or type in X for Xavier Howard. This is the pinned comment on today's video. You get the ad break here on YouTube. Scroll on down and get your votes in. From King Zenot, do you think that with the way Dan Quinn has run the defense in OTA so far, he's innovating the Dallas defense, maybe the next Legion of Boom? Here is my request going forward. I think the phrase next Legion of Boom needs to be eliminated from all of our vernaculars. The Seahawks defense with that Dan Quinn unit was one of the best we've ever seen. The Cowboys defense last year for, the, their, for their organization, historically bad. We got to dial in those expectations. Because if we're thinking, oh, shit, we can get the next Legion of Boom, and then we get average, we're going to be disappointed instead of being like, shit, we went from we went from 29 to like 18. That's a big boost. So we got to dial it back there in terms of our expectations on the, on the defense. From Elmatic7, how does a 55-man roster versus a 53-man roster work? Great question. So it is in all reality a 53 the 53 verse 55 comes from what you're able to do during the week and for game days when you can promote and protect two players from the practice squad and bring them up for the active 53 man roster but you have to send those guys back down and how many times you can do that so for roster cut down day when we get to that in september it's gonna be 53 that is the number that matters as things sit right now. That could change down the road, but 53 plus two practice squad guys are the numbers we're at right now. Let's talk training camp now here. Namely, are you guys glad that training camp is going to be in Oxnard this season? Get your votes in for me. Type in Y for yes, you are, or type in N for no. Let me know what you guys are thinking down there in the comment section. Like, Curious how you guys are feeling there. So get your votes in. Why for yes and for no. MVP of today's show, Dominique Service, a.k.a. Angry Cowboys fan. Any way we can put this channel on ESPN, you're everyone but Stephen A. Smith, so you can argue with him. How about this? How about we stick the way that we are? This way we can do the shows we want to. 
ESPN is going to make us do stupid debate stuff that gets kind of boring. So I say no to ESPN. Let's stick right here. We can actually bring your comments up and aren't cutting to commercial every 10 minutes. Keep it real here at the Cowboys Report. From Davi, in case LVE and both Jalen Smith play this year, who do the Cowboys keep? I don't think the answer is both. I would say probably Jalen because he's already under contract. That makes it easier to keep him. So it's a good question. It would ideally be a good problem to run into, but I think Jalen is the more likely if they both play well. From ESPN2, what are the odds that we sign Richard Sherman? Less than 5%. There's some Sherman Jerry Jones issues, a numbers game at corner, and I think Sherman's looking to go to a different destination in the end. From Joey Drada, I'm scared about the Eagles' draft capital. Can you help me feel better? Draft capital is only potential. That's what it is. You have to actually go hit on those draft picks. Yes, the Eagles have great, great draft capital. Do you know why they have great draft capital? Because they're bad. That's why. If they're good this year, I got producer Jugs there. He's like, look at me like, they are bad, Jeremy. I don't know what you want me to tell you. The Eagles are not a good football team. Uh, they're, they're, and I know we got our Eagles troll in there every now and then in, in live comments. Like, they're not good. The draft capital scares you because those picks are going to be early. That's how you feel better about it. Joe with a great troll question here. Should we sign Dontari Poe and Daryl Worley? Good one, Joe. I appreciate it. Obviously, the answer is a big, fat no on that one. All right, Dominique Service, a bit long, but we'll get it working there. My last Super Chat today, MVP, thank you very much. Ending training camp, you won't see Earl Thomas, Sherman, or any big name. We have no money. And throughout our friends, we've always had young players. I think you're right in the end. The Shermans, the Earl Thomases, they're not going to come to Dallas. But it's not just because of money stuff, although Catboy is very cheap. The other reason, Cowboys don't want those guys, I think. Those guys are not expensive right now. Now, maybe Richard Sherman is a little bit more so since he's his own agent. But a lot of the top free agents left, as we saw last year with Everson Griffin, they're not that expensive. I think you could make it work if you wanted to in the end. From Kathleen Callahan, what do you think of adding Gerald McCoy late to help push the young guys along and have a good leader with a defense lacking veteran leaders? So I don't mind that idea. It is, a, it is telling to me, however, that the Cowboys, who I think of the NFL teams out there right now, would have the best insight into where Gerald McCoy is at in his rehab, haven't really shown a lot of interest. And they said, at least publicly leading up to the offseason, like, yeah, we got some interest in bringing Gerald McCoy back. And then they didn't. So maybe Dan Quinn didn't want him. I like Gerald McCoy. I think he would be a good leader. I just don't know in the end if the medical checked out. Now, if you want to bring him on instead of like veteran coaching staff, mentor, intern role, heck yeah. But I don't know how he makes the roster right now coming off his injury. That's my biggest red flag. From Emil, more valuable for the team, Demarcus Lawrence or Zach Martin? Mm, good question. See, Zach Martin unquestionably is the better football player. Um, like he is a, a surefire Hall of Famer. Lawrence, though, as the reliable edge despite down uh, sack production, plays a more impactful position. I, I think I think I actually might go to Marcus Lawrence because even when the sack numbers down, he's still making a huge impact. But frankly, there's not a wrong answer. Like of the top five most important guys, Dak Prescott won. And honestly, probably take your pick of two or three here, Tank or Zach Martin. From Bo Bean, should we have looked at Pharaoh Cooper to be our return man? I wouldn't have minded that. I do think the Cowboys' moves are indicative of, hey, we want CeeDee Lamb to get some touches back there. I think that would have been a big reason why there. But, yes, I would have explored Pharaoh Cooper, although John Fossil knows him pretty well. So maybe that was the deciding factor in the end. From Luis Hernandez, if Jabril Cox impresses, do you let go of both Keanu Neal and Leighton Van Der Esch, maybe keep Neal as a hybrid piece? Uh, very possible. Heck, even if Cox does not impress this year, I think that might be a path the Cowboys pursue. Fourth round rookie, probably more of a, of a limited impact first season. But Cox and Neal as weak side linebackers, coverage guys at their best, play similar roles. I think you're on to something there, Luis, for next season. 
X2 Pro Skills, hot take, CD Lamb is the next Julio. Uh, love the optimism. I also love CD Lamb in the end. I think the play style wise, though, I'd actually might go DeAndre Hopkins if Lamb becomes as great as he potentially could be. I think that play style there, the contested catch stuff, might be a slightly better fit. He's not quite as, as rocked up as either guy's, though, truly is in, in the end.